there's only nine numbers in the universe. And in fact, it's even more simpler than that. Creator says that I'm going to take the nine core creative frequencies and they're all going to be based on three numbers. Three, six, and nine. That Nikola Tesla taught his students. Royal Raymond Reif, John Keeley, if humanity only knew the power of the three sixes and nines, it would be a completely different universe. This is the power of the three sixes and nines. This, what you're looking at is Marco Rodin's work. It starts where you see, let's say you start at one. You go, one and one is two, double the number. Two and two is four, you draw a line from two to four. Four and four is eight. Eight and eight is 16, where one plus six is seven. That's what you do in ancient mystery school Pythagorean math. You reduce the multiple digits into the single digit integer. That's your nine core creative frequencies. That's essentially, there's nine numbers in the universe. That's all. Ten is a man-made concept. Zeros are placeholders in the decimal system. It's not of God. It's not God's language. We're talking about the language of creation, the language of the creator, or what the Bible talks about in the beginning. In the beginning, there was a creator. There was the water, even before there was the word. Even before the Holy Spirit is mentioned in the Bible, you had the water. Go back, reread, study Genesis 1 through 6. You see that I'm telling you the truth. So that the water is part of the triune God. Literally, even when you go in depth Bible study, even in the Christian community, the scholars will tell you that's the truth. Everybody else is operating in gross deception if they think that that's not the case. Pantheism, they say. Oh, Dr. Horowitz and all these others out there saying, oh, God is in everything. Well, gee whiz, everything is made of God's footprint or signature, and that's what this is. This is Rodin's infinity pattern. He likens it to God's signature on everything. And so you're going to learn more about this in the next couple of minutes. What are we talking about? Nothing new. In the old days, it was called polymath. Sources from the Greek word poly, polys meaning much, great in quantity, or mathes meaning learning. So a person who excels in multiple fields, particularly the arts and science, is also called Renaissance man, is a master of polymath. Now I know most of you hate math. I know most of you didn't do well in math because that's man's math. God's math is real simple. It doesn't lose everybody. So da Vinci is seen as an epitome of the Renaissance man. He was a master of polymath. And you look at the ancient understanding. These definitions come from Webster's Dictionary. You never heard these terms. Why haven't you heard about this, the fundamental essence of everything? Why? Because you're a dumbed down, mind control slave of the global elite. And now you're waking up. So polyhistor is a synonym for polymath. In fact, hister and mind and math mean the same. Imagine that. Hister is related to math. They mean the same. Everything sources from math. The creative language is math. If the spoken word it goes into the water, into actually the firmament. Remember Genesis 1-2 says, in the beginning there was the creator, then the spirit of the creator hovered over the face of the water, divided the water from the water to create the firmament or the dome. Some Bibles say the ether. And then that's akin to, in physics, the quantum field. Into that quantum field was the word was spoken. What is word but sound? What is sound? Electromagnetic frequencies. What's that? Simple math. So these are the electromagnetic frequencies of creation that the Creator has blessed us because He loves us. He, she loves us. And there's a covenant, there's a contract. The covenant says that the Creator will always be there for Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, for all the children, all the 144,000 tribes. All of the people who have the love of the Creator and faith and understand the creative technology of prayer and the lips, the labiaratum, the creative instruments. Because if you're created in the image of the Creator, then guess what? The Creator creates through the spoken word. 
with love, with heartfelt loving intention to create in joy a blessing that can go off and be creative, then guess what you are able to do is the same. The lips in prayer is the creative technology. And the heartfelt loving intention comes because of the key that opens that door of faith. You gotta have faith. Now for those pagans among you or atheists among you, you might as well walk out. Seriously. We love you, but this ain't the place for you. This isn't the time in history for you. And if you think that it is, God bless you with that belief system. Because what we're gonna see, what we're gonna witness soon. I'll share before the end of this program is something that's going to dramatically change and shift everything. Philomath, lover of learning. Plato and Aristotle define mathema as relative to discipline or, or discipline. Doctrina, learning the fundamental laws governing everything. You know, you buy a refrigerator, you get a user's manual. You buy a car, you're told you take your car in X, Y, Z time period to keep your maintenance up. How come they don't give women giving birth to babies the fundamental knowledge about what they're looking at and how to take care of it? So now these philosophers and their many disciples consider mathema in terms of education, which included arithmetic, geometry, astronomy, and music. And language that I'm speaking right now, English, is a mathematical creative technology that is the maximum dumbing down technology ever invented. I'll show you why in a couple of minutes. So Da Vinci said, this is a quote from Da Vinci, there's no certainty where one cannot apply any of the mathematical sciences. And the road to finding oneself, including your highest qualities and creative potentials, is paved by mystery school math engaging the matrix. Now, what's a matrix? Webster's defined matrix as something within or something from which something else originates. It's not a, just a Hollywood film. A rectangular array of numbers, algebraic symbols, or mathematical functions. Matrices play intimate roles in every aspect of life. The word is found several times in the Bible, in Exodus and in Numbers. Moses bade sacrifice to the Lord. Everything that openeth the matrix. That was done so that the Hebrews could be freed. Today we're enslaved. Every which way possible. Profiteering off of humanity's ignorance and suffering is the game plan. So that how do you come out of her, my people, lest ye be infected by her plagues, her lunacy, her hypocrisy? How do you do that? Real simple. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven. Then all else comes to you. How come? Because the kingdom of heaven in the religious world, in the theological realm, is the musical mathematical matrix that's right here, right now. It's precipitating, crystallizing, miraculously manifesting you right here, right now. It's running through you. You're in it. Without it, you'd be not even aware of anything. You'd not be here. We would not see you. Why did da Vinci write backwards? The same reason that the global industrialists, back in the 1400s when da Vinci was starting to do his work, decided that they were going to change the new world language to create a new world order you've got to have a new world language. Let's call it English. Let's get the King James Bible in English. When? Same time. Late 1400s began, 1515, done. King James and his boys, Sir Francis Bacon, alias William Shakespeare, Shakespearean plays is like the media of today. The theater was the media, and the message was in English. And now let's take a look. Da Vinci wrote backwards because what they did is they flipped. They flipped alphanumerically. I just told you that everything in creation is math. 
the labia ratum, the lips, are the creative instruments. So now, 